And now there was one other big headline that came out of Trump coming to Alabama, and it's a really strange one. But I have to point it out because I think a lot of people are approaching this story incorrectly. Now, I get that my opinion is going to make a lot of people unhappy, but, I'm, you know, so what? You, I, hopefully you come to this show to hear a perspective that you hadn't thought of, not just because you want to hear somebody that agrees with everything that you already think. So just hear me out on this, contemplate whether I'm right or wrong, and then make a decision yourself. If you disagree, you disagree, fine. Put that in the comment section. I'd lo love to have that conversation with you. But there was a Trump supporter that popped the big baby Trump balloon with a knife. So if you didn't see this thing, there was a, a, a big balloon and it's in the shape of uh, a baby, but the baby like has Trump's head. So it's a giant balloon that mocks the president. It, it's made the media rounds. I think it even went to London one time when he was, it may have been actually made over there. I'm not sure because I think that was its first appearance. But anyway, this thing's made the rounds and there were a whole bunch of people that brought it to the Bama LSU game. And a Trump supporter came by and popped it with a, a knife or like a box cutter or something. Uh, anyway, slashed it open. The balloon doesn't work anymore. All right. First of all, in this story, there are no good guys. Everybody involved is a moron. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. However, making a balloon mocking the president is childish and unproductive, yes. That's absolutely true. I don't think this balloon is a productive form of free speech. It is protected under free speech, but I don't think it's a particularly good or smart free speech because it makes exactly one statement, which is, I hate Trump and want to belittle him. Is that saying anything about his economic policy? No. Is it saying anything about his policy even when it comes to things like border security? No. Is it saying anything about his foreign policy? No. All it's saying is, hey, Trump's a baby. <laughs> okay, you're an idiot. If that's the best you've got, you've got nothing. So I don't think that the people coming together with the, the Trump baby balloon are doing anything productive or good for the country. I think that they have a stupid message and they should be ashamed of themselves. Though I will say it is good to see that Democrat voters, you know, the rank and file people, like you know, wasting money on useless crap just as much as the leaders of their party. So I guess at least they're on the same page in that sense. But here's the thing. Protesting. Protesting is not a crime. Yes, it is dumb speech, but dumb speech is still free speech. There's nothing wrong with what they're doing from a legal perspective. It may be dumb. It may be unwise. It may not be something that furthers the political narrative in this country to a good place. It may even be something, as I believe, that is actually ultimately bad, but it's still something that is protected under free speech. Destroying a person's property is not, and that's what this guy that slashed the balloon did. How is this any different than the Antifa thugs that go around stealing people's MAGA hats and burning them? How is it different? It's one side putting on something that expresses their political opinion, and people go around and remove it and destroy it because they disagree with it. If that's the best you've got, then your message sucks. If you are so intolerant of somebody disagreeing with you that you have to destroy their property just to make a statement, you're the little person, you're the unthinking person. And this guy is no different than the Antifa thugs that destroy people's property to make a political statement. He's in the same boat as they are. And I know that there are a lot of people that supported it, that were cheering him on, which was ridiculous, but that's the way that it is. You think about that video we saw and we covered about the guy at Whataburger who threw the drink in the guy's face and stole his hat. Now, that one's a little different because there was assault and then theft, but the theft of the hat is no different than just straight up destroying the Trump balloon. And so if you're supporting this guy, I really want you to think about that because I actually saw some people defending this guy and saying that, oh, it's a good thing that he slashed the Trump balloon just because they don't like the Trump balloon. And there were even people that put up a GoFundMe account to pay for the guy's legal fees and to pay his bail and all this other stuff. Don't do that. You're associating with this guy. And what he is doing is not helping. In fact, all it is doing is playing into the stereotype of the angry Trump supporter that can't handle a difference of opinion, and so he has to destroy the balloon 
because he's too unthinking and not smart enough to come up with a political debate himself, which, by the way, is accurate. But it feeds that stereotype and helps people on the left believe that all people that support Trump are that way. Because here's the thing. Is the Trump balloon changing anybody's mind? Any of you out there that support Trump, have you ever looked at the Trump balloon and go, you know what, these guys are actually making some good points. Maybe I should reconsider my support of the president. No, because it, it's not designed to do that. All that is designed to do is to be a big billboard to everybody saying, no, we hate Trump. That's all it does. And you know what? Slashing that balloon, the only thing that it says is, well, we hate you for hating Trump. That's stupid too. You're not having a productive conversation. You're not solving any problems. You're having a disagreement over a cult of personality. One that hates the personality, one that loves the personality, but you're not doing anything productive. Now, I will say this, though. Even though I agree and stand by everything that I just said, I do not think that the they got what they deserved is appropriate, but I will say this. How did they not see this coming? You're going to a state where Trump is more popular than in any other state in the country and a state where just about everybody that you pass has a pocket knife. Like, how did they not see that bringing a giant balloon mocking the president was kind of a dumb idea in this state? Again, not justifying it, not saying it was okay, not saying that the guy shouldn't face legal penalties, which he already has, in response to that. He should be, you know... Anything that comes with destruction of property, legally, he should be tried just like anybody else. He should be treated just like anybody else. But what's hilarious in this, it's like, did the people that were bringing the balloon not think, well, this is Alabama, and Trump has an insanely high approval rating here, and everyone we've passed has a pocket knife. Maybe we should reconsider bringing the Trump balloon. <laughs> I'm not saying that it makes it okay, but it's kind of like, if you get mugged, I feel a lot of sympathy for you. If you get mugged when you were walking down a dark alley at 2.30 in the morning in a rough side of town with 20s hanging out of your pocket, I still feel sorry for you, but it, there's a certain point where I'm like, but yeah, that was kind of dumb. And that's kind of where I am with these guys too. Road scholars, these two people aren't. The guy slashing the balloon and the guys bringing the balloon. These are not intelligent people. Anyway, so Hoyt Hutchinson, who's the guy who wound up slashing the balloon, he called into Rick and Bubba, which appears on this fine station, News Radio 1440, and he said, and this is a quote directly from him, I watch the news every night. I watch Fox News every night. Tucker Carlson and Sean Hannity are my favorite two anchors. By the way, Sean Hannity also appears on News Radio 1440. I see this stuff going on and out, uh, on out west and up north and all other places. I get so mad about people not taking a stand. The left wants to use religion against you like you shouldn't act like this and stuff. Okay, again, this guy's not a Rhodes Scholar here. But I'll tell you this. The devil knows the Bible as good as we do. Rick Burgess, he responds, This was your turning of the temple tables? Hutchinson replies, Yes. It comes to a point when you gotta take a stand. We don't have two parties anymore. We have good versus evil. All right. First of all, you ain't Jesus and Trump is not God. Because if you're going to apply that analogy here, and I know that Rick was the one that applied it, not him. But if you're going to apply that analogy, that puts this Yahoo over there. That puts him in the role of Jesus, who has righteous indignation for people making his father's house, the temple at Jerusalem, a den of thieves, where they were extorting people that were trying to worship God. We're making that the same thing now? Really? Because if that's the case, then the offended, in the case of the temple God, the one who is being offended by there being some kind of blasphemy against him, is President Trump. Trump is not a god. Trump has done some really good things. He's been a much better president than I ever thought he would. I can say some nice things about Trump. He's still not God and never will be and is not anywhere close to it. You don't put somebody, a human being, in that role. You just don't. And Rick Burgess ought to know better. 
I mean, he knows the scripture reasonably well based on some of the things that I've heard. And, and I consider him, you know, somebody that he's, he's a colleague. He's on my radio station. He's a, a fellow Cumulus employee. I'm calling him out. It was something that was in the moment. I don't know that he really thought it through, but come on, man. You're putting Trump in the role of God there. That's a bad place to be. And I'm not saying that, you know, he was reasoning this out or anything. It was probably an impulsive moment, but come on, you, you just don't do that. That's terrible. But another thing, too, bad behavior does not justify bad behavior. When these people are doing something that is wrong and you disagree with, that doesn't justify you breaking the law to make a statement against you. When Jesus overturned the tables in the temple, whose house was that? It was his house. It was his father's house. It was supposed to be a house of prayer, and these people were violating that. These people were not doing anything wrong. Okay, they weren't doing anything legally wrong. They're doing something morally wrong. But they weren't doing anything legally wrong. And the idea that you're going to step up and break the law to make a political statement against them, that's just absurd. So, that being said... There is actually something in that interview that I thought was extremely good, and I want you to hear this. Hutchinson replied a little bit later, When you got one party that says it's okay to kill babies, and by the way, this is the first time I've ever seen a liberal get mad about chopping up a baby. Okay, I'm sorry, that's a killer burn. I mean, that is spot on. And I think that it says a lot about the left, that you had weeping and gnashing of teeth that you had an awful lot of people on the left, whether you're talking about uh, on the different cable shows, the Progress Network, I saw different stories about this going on all weekend and talking about uh, how upset they were that people did this and how it shows that Trump supporters are dangerous and violent and all this other crazy stuff. And I'm sitting there like, okay, you're really upset that this Trump baby balloon got cut but you're not worried about the millions upon millions of babies that have been slaughtered in their mother's wombs. Real babies, not made out of rubber like this balloon is. That's really where your priorities are? Seriously? I think a very apt analogy here would be the story of Jonah. Because if you'll remember at the tail end of the story of Jonah, after Nineveh had repented and God said, I will not destroy them that he sends a little tree to cover up Jonah and, and so that he can have shade when he's sitting up there on a hill watching the city of Nineveh. And Jonah is eagerly anticipating God destroy the city and kill all of the people in Nineveh. And when the tree dies, he starts crying and praying that, that it was better for him to have never been born than for this tree to have died. And God just looks at him like, and I know that you can't read inflection into the Bible, I, I get that, and I, I'm not trying to add unto, but I just imagine God's response to this being like, Jonah, you've got to be kidding me, right? Seriously, you're upset about the dumb tree, but you're not concerned about the tens of thousands of people in Nineveh. You're not concerned about their lives, their families, their connections with one another, their connection to me. But you're crying about a dumb tree? Jonah, you're supposed to be a prophet. And that's exactly what's going on here. You've got the left in this massive uproar about how dangerous Trump supporters are and how upset they are about the stupid baby balloon. But there's millions of babies being killed every single year by abortion. And we're just supposed to to ignore that? That they're not concerned about. It really does show where their priorities lie and how corrupt and wicked and vile their morals and worldview has become. That takes somebody that has been completely deadened inside, that their conscience has been trained to not observe evil. And I think that that's exactly where we are. So, yeah, don't agree with this guy at all. Think that he's really stupid and deserves everything that he gets when it comes to penalties of the law. But that was a sick burn. And the fact that these people don't see that, the fact that these people don't see the irony 
in being upset over this stupid balloon, but not being upset about the millions of lives that have been stolen from this world by the horrific sin that is abortion. I think that's very telling about where the left's priorities are. Just in case you were wondering, yes, I am a straight white Christian male and a small government constitutionalist which means I have no chance of getting any help from the government and wouldn't accept their help even if they offered. Which means I'm going to need you to like and subscribe because my gun collection is not going to pay for itself.